Hello and welcome to a new video about simple circuits. Today we're talking about already, I would say, an application. An application of simple circuits and I want to start with a measurement. So that we see what I'm talking about. A real application, a real, a real circuit, a real little circuit. So what we've got here, we've got here two resistors. One resistor, this one is uh, 10,000 ohms and one resistor is 1,000 ohms. Huh? 1,000 ohms, 10,000 ohms. And here we have a voltage source, I power supply this. Here with the red line I go to the red line here, yeah? this is plus, and here with the blue line I go to the blue line here, this is minus. And what potential difference, what voltage do we have between plus and minus? Let's Let's determine this. We do have oh, 22 volts. Uh, 22 volts between here and here. That's the difference. Now let's see what is... I could also measure this here, of course. Between those two points. Should be 22 volts. Here they are. 21.9, oh, come on, 22 volts, right? so we have 22 volts here. What do we have here between those two points? 20 volts, right? here we have 20 volts also. So if we have between here, the upper part, and the lower part, 22 volts and the middle and the lower part 20 volts. What is left here? 2 volts, of course. Well, the difference between 22 and 2. Let's see if this is correct. And yes, it is 2 volts. Now I measure, let you see it also. So between here and here, we have our 20 volts. Huh? Between here and here, we have 22 volts. So, between here and here, we must have 2 volts. Hmm? So, actually, what is, what is this thing doing here? Yeah, this thing is, I have a supply of 22 volts. Huh? And those two resistors are dividing those 22 available volts into two parts. Hmm? A lower part and the upper part. I call it lower and upper in the part one and the part two, or well, however you want, into two parts simply. Yeah? And the two part in parts in combination must be the full 22 volts. It's clear because it's just the difference between the potential of two points. Yeah, now we've seen, we have measured how this looks like, yeah? and we have seen uh, the results. And now we try to calculate this, right? So I get rid of this, of this power circuit, use this sheet of paper, and we're going to calculate and see if we can do so. Hmm? Okay, so let's try to, to draw this, this circuit we've just seen. So we do have here two clamps. We do have two resistors. I call them resistor 1, R1, and I call them resistor 2, R2. And here we are at the end. And here we had our voltage. And this voltage was 22 volts. I call it U equals 22 volts. Okay, U0. And the first thing I do, well, of course, we measured here. And we measured here. There's a clamp. There's a clamp. There's nothing going on at these clamps, at these connectors. Yeah? However, I will draw them. So we have here U2, we have here U1, the two voltages. Then I do have my current. I1, I2, as usual, yeah? 
And here, let's let's have a look at this node here, this junction, junction rule. Yeah? And whatever is going inside is I1. Here we have zero amps. Uh, there is no there is no current out. So only I2 is leaving the junction, and I will simply call this I. Because it doesn't really matter. It's I1, I2, it's I. Okay, there is just a name, one name for if it's the same, then we can give it one name and I will call it I. So, and we want to find out how this voltage here, this U0, is divided into U2 and then U1. How? How it is done? Well, I hope, meanwhile, everybody can see that this is a serious connection. So, we can replace this with this. We only have one R. Here again we have this U0. And here we have our R. And our R is R1 plus R2. And we said our R1 is, this was 1000 ohms, and this was 10,000 ohms. So actually, that's 1000 ohms plus 10,000 ohms, and this would be 11,000 ohms. 11,000 ohms is R. Now, it is easy for us, hopefully, to calculate this R here. I, because we are simply using Ohm's law, which is, by the way, important. And we say, okay, it's U0 divided by R. So actually, it's U0 divided by R1 plus R2. And if we use numbers, it's 22 volts divided by 11,000 ohms. Twenty-two divided by eleven is two. So we have two, and only it's not twenty-two, but divided by eleven, it's twenty-two divided by eleven thousand. So it's two milli, yeah, because milli is a thousandth part, two milliamps. This is what is I. So this here is also two milliamps. And this is, of course, also 2 milliamps. And now it's easy to calculate U1. Huh? Look at this. U1 equals R1 multiplied by I. Actually, it's I1. That doesn't really matter. It's R1. What was I? It was U0 divided by R1 plus R2. All right. So actually, if we are using numbers, R1 was 1000 ohms multiplied, and this was, well, 2 milliamps. Yeah. 2 milliamps, and this actually is 1000 multiplied 2 milli are 2 volts. Hey, <laughs> this is exactly, is exactly what we measure, right? So we measured here 2 volts. Huh? So, theory and application fit together. Yeah? <laughs> Should be the case. If not, if not, then there's somewhere an error. Either in the theory or in the application. 
So actually we have here R2 divided by U0. I just did not comment this now because it's pretty much the same. And this time it's 10,000 ohms multiplied by 2 milliamps. So we ending up at 10,000 to 20 volts. Ta-da! It's working, right? It is working pretty nice, I would say. Yeah. Let's have a look what is happening here. Let's take just a step back. Here we are still, we are still in this in this case, we are still without without numbers. Yeah. So this must be an, a common law. Yeah. So let's write this down. We have here u1 equals, and I just do a rewriting of this, u0 multiplied by r1 divided by r1 plus r2. Right? Also we have u2 equals u0 multiplied by r2 divided by r1 plus r2. This is this part. And now divide this by u0. So we have u1 divided by u0. So this is a relation between u1 and u0. Is r1 divided by r1 plus r0. R2. Zero. There is no r0. And here we have u2 divided by u0 equals r2 divided by r1 plus r2. So those are two relations between this voltage and this voltage and the other relation is the relation between this voltage and this voltage. And how are the, is the relation between this voltage and this voltage? So how much is u1 compared to u2? No, simple, we'll simply write this. u1 is r1 multiplied by i, divided by r2, multiplied by i, and this i is tick tick gone, so this is r1 multiplied by r2. We can see a pattern here. The voltages are behaving and the relation of the voltages are behaving exactly like the relation of the resistors. So this voltage compared to this voltage is exactly the same ratio than this resistor to this resistor. Yeah? And this is the law of a voltage divider. As simple as that. Yeah? Just if this resistor is 10 times bigger than this resistor, what we have, then this voltage is 10 times bigger than this voltage. What we measured, what we calculated, and everything fits, to, fits together. Yeah? So if we know about this rule, if we know that, then we can be faster. Why we can be faster? Because we are getting rid of this I. I don't have to calculate this I. I don't have to calculate... I, I simply set, use the rule and know how the voltages will behave. How is this here? Let's see. This voltage uh, compared to this voltage is this resistance compared to this resistance, to the whole resistance, is also the same. So also if we compare this to the total voltage, to the big voltage, the incoming voltage, it's the same. Yeah? Also here, this voltage compared to this voltage is this resistance compared to the total resistance. Those are the laws, yeah? those are the voltage divider rules, laws. Simply how it is, right? And if we know this, you can shorten calculation significantly. Attention! Attention! This is only, this is only valid if there is no load. Yeah? If the voltage divider is just a voltage divider. 
Because if you kind of think, okay, I have 22 volts now, I just need 20 for my application, I make a voltage divider and then I will power supply my application. Because this power supply of the application will drain here current and whenever here the current is, 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 is going out, this equation does not fit anymore. Huh? So it's only, actually it's just for, if we have really here a load, I have to, the load, I have a parallel of the load and my R2 and I have to do somehow uh, think about that. Huh? Maybe the load is very small, then it doesn't really matter. However, the, 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 the bigger the load is compared to these resistors here, huh? the, the more significant this, this error will get. But, uh, you know, it's much faster, much faster. Voltage divider. Good rule. Yeah. Sometimes people are also talking about current dividers. I don't like current divider rules because uh, I, they, they, you know, really, this is easy. Yeah, this is you can use without too much thinking. The only rule is they care about the load. Yeah. But in, in current dividers, th this also applies if there is not two resistors, but Four, five, six. The voltages are dividing to four, five, six resistors exactly like the resistance. Huh? Exactly behaving this. And in, in current dividers, this is a little bit more tricky. This is why I will not explain current dividers. Because I think they are, not, it will not simplify things. And I don't want to complicate things. I want to simplify things. And I want something, I want help. <laughs> and not make it worse. Yeah. Good voltage divider. One application of a simple circuit. Another application of a simple circuit, where really there is a lot of thought inside, is an application with actually two voltage dividers. And if you're using two voltage dividers and measure the middle voltage, compare the middle voltage of these two voltage dividers, suddenly not called two voltage divider, it's called bridge, yeah? Wheatstone's bridge. Next time we're talking about the Wheatstone's bridge, what is so special about it. Yeah? For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>